One more topic I like to cover is this idea of internal resistance. It's not really that complicated in light of that we can deal with complex looking circuit by combining things in series and or parallel. The model here is this. You have a battery that you would like to hook on to a light bulb which has a resistance of 2.3 ohms and as you connect it some current will flow right it's all good in theory except that the battery in itself inside the battery there's a little bit of resistance that's unavoidable because there's component that makes up the actual battery itself and as charge flows through some of that material it's going to meet a little bit of resistance. So it's essentially another resistance in series. So in that sense, because in series, the current is the same, but we split the voltage, the device that you want to run doesn't get the full voltage supplied by the battery. The full voltage supplied by the battery is here and some people call it the EMF, electromotive force, or you can think of it as kind of like the theoretical voltage that the battery can supply. In the ideal case when there's no internal resistance, but that's unavoidable. You always have a little bit of resistance, just even through the connection. And so given that we have some internal resistance here, the amount of voltage you get at V1 will be less than the full overall theoretical voltage. And that's usually how batteries die, basically, where <clears throat> the internal resistance gets so great that the external light bulb, in this case, is not even getting the voltage it needs to run. In terms of analysis though, we just treat this internal resistance like any other resistance. And in the case we have two resistances here combined in series, we just combine them into one equivalent resistance where Rs is equal to R1 plus little r in, just like that. So given that my V source, the only thing Supplying the voltage is 1.58 volts as given. Then the current through the circuit is just Vs over Rs because we only have the one equivalent resistance now. The circuit is simple again. You can simply do this math and get that. So that's part A. That's how much current flows. Then we want to calculate the power supplied to the bulb. And you can do that in three ways. You can use P equals IV, or you can use Ohm's law to further expand into I square R or V square over R. And we'll explicitly in this time plug in the different numbers to see that the answer should be exactly the same. No reason for it not to be. But if I want to use P equals I times V, I need to find out my V first. So again, we want to split this back up into my Ri, that's my R1 over here. So because of series, same I, so I1 is equal to 0 0.658, but we split the voltage, so we have to work out V1 by I1, R1, R1 being 2.3 ohms, and you can see that it's a little less than the theoretical voltage of 1.58 volts. And sometimes we call this the terminal voltage because that's the voltage you get when you measure on the two sides of the battery where we can physically actually get to. But wording aside, the analysis is pretty much exactly the same as what we had before. So given my V, we can work out my power to be I times V. So we take this times 1.51416. 
we could also use i squared times r or even v squared over r all exactly equivalent because we're just combining Ohm's law there's no way for this to be any different so in dealing with internal resistance what we basically do is we model it as if there's an extra resistance in series with the battery and then we treat everything the same from there on out.